Now we'll talk about problem solving, which as we said, a lot of thinking is really focused on solving particular problems. And this has been a major area of research in the field, trying to understand the kind of strategies, algorithms, techniques that people use when they're trying to solve different kinds of problems and see how optimal people are, what kind of systematic errors they make, the kind of similar kinds of questions that we've been looking at earlier. And so there's a couple basic strategies that people tend to use. So, you know, the most intuitive is just basic trial and error, try stuff out and find out what works. Um, and, and in some ways that's the most kind of basic random exploratory strategy that you can adopt. And we see this in animals and people just kind of, you know, try it out. There's also a, a more goal directed form of problem solving where you have a sense of what the solution is that you're looking for. And you try to make the current state, the current situation look more and more like that target solution. And that's known as hill climbing gradient descent, different names for the same kind of thing. But uh, like in this Tower of Hanoi problem, uh, that doesn't always work particularly well. So if you try that strategy here, you get kind of stuck. So in the Tower of Hanoi problem, you're taking these uh, different disks and trying to get them uh, onto this other uh, peg over here by moving one at a time, you can't put a larger one on top of a smaller one. That's the key constraint. You move the smaller disc over here because it's closer to the goal state. And then you're kind of like, okay, now what can I do? You get kind of stuck. Um, and so then you eventually realize that you need to move it here first, move the other one over there, move this back over, back and forth. It's a <laughs> more complicated strategy that, that where you have to not go directly towards the, the final solution right at the start. And this other classic problem solving task gave rise to the well-known concept of thinking outside of the box. Here, you're supposed to connect all of the dots using only four straight lines without lifting up your kind of pen, if you do this on a piece of paper. And if you try to do that while staying within the box, you just can't do it doesn't work. You can't connect all the dots. Uh, and so it's only when you realize that you can kind of extend your line outside of the box in multiple ways, I think that works, um, then you can uh, solve the, the problem. And so again, this is, this is where that phrase, I'm thinking outside the box, comes up with. And it's really kind of this notion that we're meant, it's metaphorical, in the sense that we're kind of trapped in our own mental box, our own constraints of our own thoughts. And this is known as the kind of mental set and functional fixedness, uh, this idea that, that how we think about things is based on kind of our existing associations. We have a hard time kind of thinking of different kinds of solutions that go beyond the normal uh, conventional way of understanding uh, like the constraints on the problem.